Welcome back to the Noah's YouTube channel. Today we'll be talking about how Dan Slot changes his writing really quick and how it shouldn't be that way. So let's get straight into it. I'm not trying to say that Dan Slot's writing is bad, and by all means, it is actually really good. I loved his Red Goblin storyline, except there are some things that really change. Like, at one point, Dan Slop will be writing a story about Spider-Man getting all kinds of new suits. And then Spider-Man will be, like, needing to pay for something. I don't know. Everybody likes the fact that Spider-Man is relatable. Except at one point, you have to draw the line to where how much relatability he's in because you've already set up the points of parker industries horizon labs the future foundation and a whole bunch of new suits and i just think i just think that dan slot has to really figure out what he's doing before he does these swings in story arcs uh take um the red goblin storyline for example in issue 800 it was a big climax with flash thompson dying and then a issue 801 came around the corner and they started talking about how spider-man was helping a man from bank robbery or something it was a story called There For You, and it literally happened like a month after issue 800 come, came out. And I don't understand how it would change that quick. You have a big story where Flash Thompson dies, and Spider-Man has to fight off the Green Goblin one last time, and then you decide to, then you decide to do this friendly neighborhood Spider-Man story. I thought that I thought that that wasn't going to happen for a while. What I think he needs to do with his writing is he needs to branch out for a little while before he gets to those stories. Like, make like a one-off issue about the aftermath of the um, Green Goblin's attack. Don't just do a one-off issue about the heartfelt, heart-wrenching something. You, it's not good for the Spider-Man story. And I think it happened way too fast. You know? And that's my opinion on Dan Slot. He has to do he has to do this big things and then he goes back to the old ways of Spider Man. He had Parker Industries and then he took it away, so that got a bunch of hate. I don't even to be honest, I don't even think Parker Industries should have should have existed. It's an basically a knockoff of Stark Industries and Peter Parker's a billionaire for some reason. It takes away from the relatability because not everybody who's reading the comic is a billionaire. You know, sometimes Peter Parker had like normal stuff to do. Like maybe sometimes there's gang wars or something. I don't know. But you can't just give him a billion dollar corporation you gotta branch out a bit you know can't do that and Dan Sl I believe that Dan Slot's trying to do it again with his new run Spider-Man volume 3 in 2022 he did the end of the Spider-Verse arc and right now I think that he's making a big mistake by adding in Spider-Boy and making him work with Norman Osborn a lot more. Because in the Zeb Wells run, as you as you know, I literally told you guys, Peter Parker still doesn't really trust Norman Osborn all that much. And he still needs some time to trust him. And over here in the Spider-Man run, Dan Slott's just throwing in that Peter Parker is really good to Norman Osborn. He even allowed him... He even allowed him at Aunt May's, like, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving thing. So that's a thing. I just hope he doesn't make another mistake like that in back in 2017. Because what he did with Parker Industries was 
not very good in my opinion. Hey, the cover's very good though. Alex Ross is really good at art. Well, I'll see you guys in the next video. Uh, say bye, Coco. Coco says bye. See you later.